This is Amplify You, the podcast about you discovering your message and broadcasting it to the world. If you're a coach, author, or speaker, you'll want to tune in. If you're looking for the best return on your time investment to get your message out to the world in a bigger way, we're giving you full access and behind the scenes look of how we're running our podcast, how our clients have found success, and what you can do to launch your podcast today. The world needs your message. I'm Michelle Abraham, the host. Join my family as we unleash your unique genius and find the connections you need to launch your adventure today. Join us and let's get Amplified. Hello, hello, Amplify You family. Michelle Abraham here, your host. I am super excited to bring you an amazing guest today. Her name is Sandra Griff, and Sandra, she works with people on all sorts of life transitions to help clear their energy and their clutter and their mind, body, soul, and even at home. So she does the physical inner physical clearing of the cluttering in your home as well. But she's lived in the dark, a lonely place of being stuck and feeling like life had died inside of her. And I know Amplify You family out there, some of you can relate to this. But lifting herself up from life's challenges, like an empty nest, a divorce, and the death of a partner, um, that was difficult and sometimes unbearable. So she discovered the power of her mind and her energy, which is really great. She now teaches others how to refocus and use the energy to get back to life. And I love what you're doing, uh, Sandra. Sandra's an international speaker and energy movement facilitator. And she spends her time immersed in energy and helping people revive their mental and emotional health. She is a teacher at heart, an EFT practitioner, Reiki master, trained professional organizer, uh, you do it all, uh, Sandra. I'm super excited to have you with us. So welcome to the show, everyone. Welcome. And this is Sandra Griff, so welcome. Well, thank you, Michelle. I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited to, you, to have you here, too. So Sandra and I recently met in a the Profitable Speaker Mastermind that we're in, and I just love her energy. And you know, it's funny that you, my, your energy is what attracted me to you in the first place. So I think that's really... Obviously, you're uh, walking, walking the talk of what you teach. If it's your energy, that's reaching out to people. So I just love that. I think that was really cool. So I wanted to bring you on the show and really, you know, let's dive into like what it is that you're doing. What's your big mission? What's your why and your message behind what you do? First, I will say that energy is, is what attracts us to people. It also what repels us <laughs> from people. So that's why I do what I do is because I recognize that my energy was so low. I could not attract the things that I wanted. I was just not in that energetic space because you need to be vibrating at the same level of the stuff you want to attract. So if you want to attract something really good and fun and healthy and, and joyful, you can't attract that when you're sad and depressed and feeling lonely. You have to raise your vibration to get closer to what it is you want. So that really is how I got into this. I, I ended up divorced, um, ended up, I actually initiated, it was kind of a funny story. Um, my husband worked in the oil field and once our daughter grew up and left home, I suffered from empty nest and, and he was gone all the time. So I said, wow, you know, you either get another job or find a new wife. So he did find a new job and we moved to Edmonton, which was fabulous. And then he found a new wife. So, I mean, Hey, it was, it was really good for me because I, I got to have this wonderful new experience of learning about myself and really just having myself to focus on, which I did. I dove into everything that I knew nothing about, which was energy. I actually, the first thing I did when I, I said, hey, I want a divorce, I phoned a friend and said, um, can you give me the name of your psychic? Because, I mean, that's what every normal person does, right? <laughs> well, that's what I do. So. <laughs> I guess we're not normal. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's not what I would, that's not where I would have normally started. Um, because I didn't, I wasn't really a believer. But I needed help. I didn't know where to go. And she said, start here. So she actually worked in a place where there were tons of practitioners and they did everything from Reiki to astrology to intuition classes, meditation classes, yoga, everything was there. And I just 
dove right in and Sounds like my um, kind of place. <laughs> right? It's, it doesn't exist anymore, sadly. Now I'm, I'm still in contact with a lot of the people. But it really, um, I'm so grateful for those people too, because being a non-believer, it was really, um, they stuck with me because I was, oh yeah, and I'll prove it. <laughs> prove it. <laughs> You're the analytical type that made them prove it, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's the great thing about energy is once you believe, you will see it everywhere. But what we tend to do is prove it first, then I'll believe it. But if you can suspend your disbelief for a moment, if you can open your mind and start looking for it, you will see it everywhere. We are living in a world of angels if we choose to see them. Mm, that's cool. Love that. So what made you change your mind? What, made, what, was, what was the proof that you saw? Uh, manifestation. Actually, mm -hmm. I was taking a manifesting class and um, funny enough, she said, go home and practice. You don't want to manifest something big, like you don't want to manifest a car. Or you, <laughs> you can, but that's not where you're going to start. You start practicing and then you're going to see how things will um, progress, how, how you can actually do it. So I left there and I thought, you know what, I'm going to start small. I'm just, I want a donut. Mm -hmm. Bring me a donut. <laughs> so I, I worked in an office with three men. I was the um, administrative assistant for three managers and um, they never brought in donuts. Like that's not, wasn't their thing. Um, but we had a salesman come into the office the next day and he was there probably twice a month and he stopped for coffee and a visit. This time he brought donuts. <laughs> wow. First time ever. <laughs> So how could you not believe? <laughs> yeah, say, exactly. <laughs> Bring me a donut and there it appears. Um, so then of course I just started doing more and more of that. Um, the one I, I absolutely love and still do to this day, so that was like 12, 13 years ago, is um, ask for parking spots and <laughs> spots in traffic. Nice. Say, angels, I really need to merge onto this road. Please make room for me. and. Oof, two or three spots appear. Wow, amazing. <laughs> it's wonderful. Hard to not believe when stuff like that happens. Exactly, yeah. Just that, that especially the parking spots in the busy parking lot or during the holidays or something. <laughs> not right? something that normally happens, right? And then get uh -huh. that first front row parking right there. That's, you know, it's amazing. Right? <laughs> Sometimes I have to drive around the lot a couple of times, but... If I mean, you just have to be patient and believe, and all of a sudden that spot will open up. So now I, I know better. I actually ask for it about 10 minutes before I get there. <laughs> You've done smarter and you're asking for it too. Right? <laughs> I love that. That's funny. You know, I think it's, is it, it's one thing to like maybe think of something like that, but then to actually like to ask for it. I think that's the key part, right? Like you can't just think of it and like, oh, that'd be nice if there was a parking spot there. You have to actually ask for it. Is that right? Yes. Please provide me with a parking spot. And then when you get it, you say, thank you. <laughs> I love it. Thank I you. really appreciate you working with me. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. They really are our guardian angels, if you will. Um, spirit energy out there will help you any way you want if you ask for the help. Mm. Uh, I have a friend who and this is actually a word of caution. So I have a friend who said, oh, my car is getting really old. And for months she said, I think it might be time for a new vehicle. And I think it might be time for a new vehicle. I really think it's time for a new vehicle. Well, lo and behold, her car gets stolen out of the parking lot of her job. <laughs> they didn't find it until she had a new vehicle. Wow. <laughs> so, um, I mean, how... <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was funny. And, you know, the universe has got a funny way of things. My husband and I were, like, talking about moving to where we live now, which is our his family's summer home uh, on a lake. And we're like, yeah, that'd be awesome. It's our happy place. We love going there on the weekends. And we were there, like, every weekend. And we talked about it and talked about it and talked about it for probably, like, two years. 
And then um, one day we woke up and there was a flood in our living room <laughs> and it was like, okay, well now we have to move out for six weeks. And while we were out, we're like, okay, we're halfway out. <laughs> now maybe it would be a good time for a house on the market. And we did and it sold in two days. So it was just, you know, the universe taps at you and taps at you and they feel less and they slap you in the face. So I'm like, hey, that, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I quite honestly usually wait to be slapped in the face. <laughs> I actually do. And for sure, until I even knew about it, I didn't know about energy. Yeah. So I would wait until I was literally at the ed end of my rope before I would take any kind of action. And now it's, it's way easier when you can see how it works. Just yeah. way easier. And most of it was achieved not by necessarily connecting to the energy itself, mm -hmm. but by connecting to joy. Mm. which brings the energy. Yeah. Now, do you practice like the, like the, that what you were looking for in the future is already existing in the, in the present? Is that what you practice? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Gratitude is huge. You really need to be grateful for what you have, mm -hmm. uh, because if you're not grateful for what you have, you can't manifest more. You have to be grateful for what you have, and then they bring you more. Mm -hmm. Because it's the gratitude, it's the joy that helps them tap into you, right? Mm -hmm. Because the energy on the other side is not filled with sadness and anger, it's filled with joy. Mm -hmm. So these days, it's much harder for people to manifest things because they're living in fear. Yeah. And it's hard not to connect to that fearful energy. Yeah, I have to say, like, in the last couple of years from where we live, like, we don't watch TV or, like, don't watch the news, like, hardly at all. And just the difference in like things that have manifested in our lives have been huge, like just incredible. And I think it was really just that, like you said, that like living in fear of what's happening on the news and what's happening in the world and like, you know, being grounded in like, like there's good in what's happening right now and not hearing it on a constant basis, I think has been very helpful for our family. <laughs> I agree. I actually stopped watching the news probably 14 years ago before I even knew about energy because I could feel how it was affecting my body. Yeah, it just feels negative, right? Yeah, interesting. And oh my gosh, especially with what's currently going on in the world right now, it's good to just stay with it or stay away from it and, you know, know that there's good happening and it's all happening for a greater, a greater reason, right? Well, and I can also say that I believe what you need to know will come to you. Mm. So my, my daughter was living in Seattle with her husband and she was going to be, they were going to be driving up to Edmonton in Northern BC, Alberta, wrong province. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Northern BC. So I'm thinking about it. And I was talking to somebody in Grand Prairie further North than us. And um, they said, Oh, what are you doing? And I, this weekend, and I said, Oh, well, my daughter's supposed to be coming up. And they said, Oh, where's she coming from? And I said, Seattle. And they said, Oh, like, does she know about the flooding? So I said, immediately, I got off the phone and called my daughter and said, Hey, hun, did you know that we've got a bunch of flooding here in Alberta? Um, that a bunch of roads are closed, and you better check your route, and make sure you can even get up here the way you were thinking you were going to come. Mm -hmm. Well, she phoned me back and said, oh, thanks, mom, because we've now changed our route and, and they were able to safely get here. But had I not got that information, <laughs> they would have they would have been stuck somewhere and or had a twice as long of, tr of a trip. And I mean, how weird I, I say weird. How wonderful. How wonderful is it that that information came to me just when I needed it like that? That to me is, is synchronicity. That's, that's yeah. the way this works. Yes, absolutely. I think that's so cool. So what do you love doing with your clients the most? Like you do so many different modalities. What's your favorite? Oh my goodness. You know what? I don't have a favorite. Uh, people say, oh, do what your passion is. My problem is I'm passionate about everything <laughs> I do when I do it. Now, I used to try to keep the organizing separate from the energy mm -hmm. because two completely different clientele. But what I found is that they are interconnected. I was going to ask you about that. Let's talk about the energy of stuff and clutter. <laughs> yeah, they're like stuff has energy. And when you're living in all of that stuff and it's not organized and your space is cluttered, it actually changes 
the energy. So it makes it darker and harder to get the joy through. So um, it's like a light breeze. Have you ever been in a in a dark, dank house and you open the windows? and the light starts coming in, and then you open the door, and the little breeze starts coming in, and you start to feel better. That's energy movement. It's, the, it's not just the light and the breeze. Or the breeze, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's how it makes you feel. And it's the how it makes you feel that is what I do. So with Reiki, it's how you feel. I help calm your body. With EFT, emotional freedom technique, I help calm your mind. With the organizing, I help clear out the energy in your space and get that energy moving. Mm. So it's all connected. And I also mm. do house clearing. Uh, so mm. saging, mm -hmm. office space, I call it space clearing. Because you can clear any space and you should regularly. Just like having a shower, getting a massage, brushing your teeth it's self-care yeah how often do you clear a space in your house really it depends on how you feel about it mm. anytime you move into a new space you should have it cleared mm -hmm. if you buy new furniture you should have the furniture cleared most mm -hmm. of this stuff people can do themselves mm -hmm. but if you're going to do a big space and you've never done it before then it's probably better to hire a professional just like mm -hmm. eft you know, everybody can tap every single day and help make themselves feel better. Mm -hmm. But if you have something big that you're trying to tackle, mm -hmm. it's better to have someone help you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed like after you've like cleaned a room or like, you know, like going into my kid's room where like their clothes are everywhere. Like when you like clean it and put it away, it's like, I think I feel so much better, right? And I'm sure they sleep better too, or I'm sure they feel better as well too. <laughs> They do. Yes, absolutely. You feel better. You sleep better. You are lighter and happier mm -hmm. just by clearing your physical space. Yeah, so imagine what it would do for your energy. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. And anything else that you've learned about like moving space, like like in a cluttered house, like is that something like if you you know someone like the, it's like a hoarder or something like what like what is is that some what would you do to help them? <laughs> Oh, hoarding is, is something all unto itself, mm -hmm. uh, but just in a regular house where people have been living for 40 years and the basement yeah. is full and, and yeah. they have to move. Collected um, stuff over the years. <laughs> yeah. Right? And it's really hard to get rid of. Um, and even with hoarding, hoarding is a mental disorder mm -hmm. and EFT can actually help with that because it's how we think about our stuff that's causing mm -hmm. the issue. Right, I can't get rid of that because my grandmother gave it to me. It's an heirloom. I like my aunt gave that to me. What if she comes and sees I don't have it anymore? Mm -hmm. People don't give us stuff to cause us grief. They give us stuff that we can love and that makes us feel good. If it doesn't make you feel good anymore, you need to get rid of it. Right. And, and recognizing that is the first step. Hmm, interesting. And I think like now, like we could take pictures of it and still remember it that way, right? Right. <laughs> you <can> take, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can take pictures of it. And that's, that is actually one of the things that I do is, is help to help people release things is to mm. give them those thoughts about how someone wouldn't want them to be sad or upset over having this thing. They didn't give it to them to make them sad, but right. take a picture of it. And that is going to keep the memory. And you don't want to clutter up your space with all those pictures either. So I actually do transfer physical pictures into digital so that oh, they can, that's a good idea. yeah, so that they can keep their pictures and not have all that clutter either. Yeah. Because so many photo albums take up so much space. I mean, right. so lovely to have, but I think you're right. Like if you could just like spend the time and get it all digital, you know, it'll last longer too. Well, not just that, but the, one of the coolest things about going digital with your photos is that you can give them to every family mm -hmm. member. Yeah. They will never, ever be lost now. When you have one picture of one thing, it's only with the person that has it. They have a flood, that picture's gone. Yeah, like I remember after my grandparents passed away, looking at some of their pictures, being like, I've never seen this one, or I've never seen that one. <laughs> That'd be really great. So then everyone can have all the pictures. Yeah, what a great idea. I love that. Yeah. Very cool. So, Sandra, I would want to ask you, you know, 
Um, when you are, when you were in that dark place and you felt like you didn't have that life and that joy anymore, what were some things that you were able to do in case any of our listeners are listening or are in that place right now? What are some steps that you were able to do to take to get over that and get out of that space and into now the new welcoming new energy? And I think one of the biggest things I learned during all of that was learning how to be uncomfortable. Hmm. We have this mindset of we need to be comfortable. Oh, I'm uncomfortable. I have to stop whatever it is I'm doing because I'm uncomfortable. Actually, being uncomfortable is where all the magic happens. Hmm. That's where we grow. That's where we learn best. That's where the magic happens. So for me, um, and I too spent so many years trying to I guess, you know what, I was probably uncomfortable all the time, but it was a familiar mm-hmm. uncomfortable. Being okay with the unfamiliar mm-hmm. is probably one of my biggest lessons. And, and that's the first thing I did was I dove into all kinds of things that I was not comfortable with. And this stretches you in all sorts of ways, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about for the people that are like, but life's just not fair and this this is what happened to me oh. and this is this is my my doing. Right? Life is not fair. This it wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. I don't know why this happened to me. Um life being fair has nothing to do with anything. Um it's it's something we say to make ourselves feel better. Mm-hmm. Life is not fair. But what life is, is, oh, you know what? It's just gone. Phew, gone. <laughs> the word just blew right out of my head. Um, what life does for us is give us what we are vibrating. So mm. if your life, if you feel like your life is not fair, mm-hmm. it's because you're creating it that way. Yeah. You can create your life any way you want. It takes time. It takes work. I'm not going to say it doesn't, but you can create a new life for yourself and get the things that you want by changing your energy. Mm. And I think that is one of the coolest things I've learned. Yeah. I mean, hello, you're in control here. Like, wow. Like, and it's just easy as like recognizing that, acknowledging it. And then, and then what do you do? Uh, you recognize it, you acknowledge it, and then you have to believe it. Mm, the belief part, right? Yeah, which and is for, the work. <laughs> and for you, that was like actual proof that it was happening. That was the belief that you were getting. Right? You yeah. start small and you start looking for the proof. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, what is so really cool about 99.9% of our lives mm-hmm. is that we tend to focus on the negative things, mm-hmm. but if you started focusing on the positive, and I don't even mean uh, like ridiculous positive, I mean just everyday positive, like the sun is shining, or people look at me like I'm nuts because I go, oh, it's raining, look at how green the grass is, that's so awesome. Um, and oh my skin feels wonderful because of the humidity i'm not my hands aren't all peeling and cracked because they're so dry um and the trees are just growing like i've got this big um i don't know if it's a pine tree or a fir tree anyway it's got the little cones on it um and there's tons of little cones on there which means that tree is thriving Mm -hmm. what a beautiful thing to see and the flowers blooming and I, i woke up this morning I woke up this morning in a house and I mean, I came downstairs and there was food in the cupboard and there are so many things to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't have all those wonderful things, the sun is shining and I woke up, right? I get a do over every single day, no matter what happened yesterday. Cool. I actually think one of the best things I learned was a friend said to me, I don't have bad days. I have bad moments. Mm. And hearing that, I just heard it once. And I went, wow, that's mm. pretty profound. <laughs> and I never had another bad day. Yeah, it's interesting. I was having one of those days a few days ago, and I was like, the, I kept saying it was a bad day, and I had to stop myself about halfway through the day. And okay, it's not a bad day. It was just a couple of things that happened. The rest of the day was fine. 
after that, I did that. But I was like, if I keep going and saying this is a bad day, this is actually going to turn into an entire bad day. <laughs> right? We so, get, there just yeah. some couple little things that went different, like, different than I thought. And just, yeah, holy smokes, it was an easy, easy hole to go down. <laughs> we see whatever we look for. Yeah. And as long as you're looking for the bad things, you're going to mm. find them. Mm. No it, question. I had an interesting conversation with um, – a uh, NLP practitioner, one of our clients, Adele Anderson, about a few years ago, about this how some people, whatever job they're in, sometimes that's where they see um, things through that lens. So my husband was a, a, mecha a mechanic of forklifts, and so he's always finding the problem. And so when he would come in the door, he wouldn't see like the dinner was made and everything's good. He would see like a piece of plastic on the floor or we'd see something wrong. I was like, why, what the hell? Like, why, why do you see that one thing out of all these things that are here? I'm like, oh, I don't understand. But it was the lens that he had on because he was, that was his work lens. Holy smokes. Like when I told him that and we kind of like, we're like, I was like, yeah, it's like interesting. You have to actually change your lens. So he come home. Well, yeah, oh, I've so actually been crazy. been developing a, a questionnaire, and that's one of the things I'm I have on the questionnaire. Do you always find a problem for every solution? Mm -hmm. Right. If if all you can see is problems, then you're looking at it wrong. You need to change how you look at it. Perception is everything. I mean, we can choose to have a bad day or we can choose to have a bad moment. Mm -hmm. We can choose to be happy or we can choose to not be happy. We actually get to choose our emotions. Yeah. We don't get to choose the ones that pop up, but we do get to choose the ones we keep. Yeah. And that is so cool. When I discovered that, that I didn't have to keep the ones I didn't want, like you feel them, they come up, you acknowledge them, and then you decide, do I want to keep that? Mm, yeah, no, I don't want to be upset with that person. That's too much energy for me. I don't want to mm. sit in that energy. I'm not going to be upset about that. Mm. It's not worth my time. Mm. So I make a conscious choice. And there's the other step. <laughs> you need to be conscious. <laughs> conscious choice. Yeah. You need <laughs> conscious choice. Yeah, and that doesn't mean <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean just being awake. Um, it actually means being present, being in the moment. Like, did that person say that to tick me off? Probably not. Right. So do I want to choose to be ticked off or do I want to just choose to let that go? Right. It's the being conscious. It's the taking yourself out of your head, that loop that keeps playing in your head and actually living in the moment. Um, I have I have a client who suffers from chronic pain and I've been doing EFT with her and she was really struggling with mobility and she went to the grocery store had terrible time in there and she was so angry but one of the workers came up and said ma'am can i help you and she had finally had enough she was at the point where she just couldn't do it herself and she recognized it she said yes please help me she said by the time they got her through the till and helped her out to her car she was no longer in pain wow interesting so how cool is it that just that simple act of kindness relieved chronic pain? Wow. I mean, there are so many great stories. And she could have said, oh, but I have chronic pain and went right back there. But she was focused on something else. She was in the moment. And that joy lifted her. Yeah. Someone else's help lifted her. I mean, it's just such a... She was able to receive, too. Yeah, that's huge. Right? Just such yeah. a great thing. So we can choose to see the bad things, or we can choose to see the good things. Mm -hmm. There are good and bad in everything. I think Dr. Phil is the one who said, no matter how flat you make a pancake, there are two sides. <laughs> and that's the case with just everything I do. You can choose to see the bad stuff or you can choose yeah. to see the good stuff because there is always something good and bad about everything. 
Yeah. Just got to change that lens you see it through. Absolutely. <laughs> Amazing. So Sandra, before we let you go, what is the one thing that you want to leave our audience with? What is the one thing you want them to know to maybe help spread their message to the world, to make a bigger impact? What is the one thing? I, I would have to say that you are 100% responsible for the life you have. So be 100% responsible. Take responsibility for your life and for your joy because no one's going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. If you want joy, you need to take it. You need to make it. Yeah. Ooh, that's going to hit home for some people listening to that. Yep. You are 100% responsible. I love it. Thank you, Sandra. Where can we find out more information about you? Where can we work with you? I, um, I have a website. It's www.everchanginglife.ca. Uh, my logo is right behind me, so you won't forget the name of my company. I'm on Facebook, and I do a Facebook Live every Tuesday morning. I um, am on LinkedIn through Ever Changing Life. You can find me in all kinds of places. Awesome. And Sandra, you've won lots of awards and you were featured in the Women Nation magazine. Like so many amazing things have happened. And uh, would you have to contribute that to your manifesting those things? <laughs> you know what? Um, I, don't, I don't actually go for the awards. But they seem to be coming to me now. I was oh, actually amazing. just nominated for one um, that's due in October. Now, I haven't actually won any yet, but I've just been nominated for my second award through Business from the Heart, uh, Your Holistic Earth, for quality care. And Yay! So High five me, to you. I got the Entrepreneur <laughs> of the Year Award on that one, too. Nominated. Right? I mean, for me, that was the... It's less about the award itself than the fact that I was nominated for quality care. Mm -hmm. For me, that's that... Strange, yeah that hit home, right? Um, because I, I do try to give my clients the best, um, sometimes more than I give myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, well that's, congratulations, that's amazing. Thank you, and to you as well. Thank you, yeah, that's super I'll see exciting. you at the award ceremony. <laughs> yeah, very, very unexpected, so that was really cool. Exactly, very unexpected. Yeah, so awesome. Well, thank you, Sandra, for spending the time with us today. I'm so happy to have had you on here to have this conversation. Something that we've said has resonated with you guys, please reach out to Sandra. She's an amazing person. She's got a huge gift and a huge heart to share with you. So please reach out and um, connect with her. And until next time, amplify you. Be out there, share your message with the world, and make a big impact. Thank you for joining us today, Sandra. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much, Michelle. You're welcome. Take care, Sandra.